What can we expect going into the fourth quarter and uh, for that matter into 2019? Yeah, I think um, the third quarter and more even so the first nine months of this year, if you compare it to the previous year, a clear proof of the strategy. Uh, growing with customers and volumes is the right thing to do, albeit in a somewhat still a difficult environment, very competitive. Um, so what would I expect going forward? Uh, I would clearly expect uh, that the competitive environment will stay, and I think we have to uh, kind of deal with lower interest rates quite for a while. Um, and in that sense, we left our outlook basically unchanged. Um, so I think you will see something as dull and boring as Q3 probably also has been. Uh, well, things are going very well on the retail front. The corporate side is, is, is a little bit more difficult. What are you doing there to try and drum up business? The corporate side, uh, basically, and I think there you need to dissect a little bit the, uh, the segmental results. Uh, clearly, is we are growing on volumes in our core Mittelstands business, where we're still by far the market leader. Um, that is kind of uh, uh, diminished or eaten up by the margin pressure that we currently have, uh, especially in Germany, also on, on credit spreads. I expect that to uh, improve a bit uh, once the ECB stops its uh, corporate bond buying program, which is announced for the end of the year. Um, then we have financial institutions, which we have uh, substantially reworked the uh, correspondent banking network um, and also have set up a very strict set of compliance uh, and credit rules, which uh, to a certain extent has its cost in terms of revenue. But I think if I look around in Germany uh, and in the rest of Europe, is paying off in a sense. Um, and on top of that, we have EMC, the part we have just announced uh, today that we sort of se will sell it to uh, SOCGEN. Um, and there we have seen a somewhat slower business also in 2018 along with the market. So in total, I think if we focus on the core business, that is where we have uh, better volumes, more customers, and that should form a solid basis for a good performance in 2019. You mentioned the EMC sale. That's an area that where the business hasn't been perhaps as good. How do you think once that sale is completed that will you know, positively impact earnings? The key, the key strategic view here is, uh, that we have is that the business is profitable. I think it's a fine business, uh, but it is very disconnected to our core businesses, and we have rather decided that we want to move that equity that's been bound there and also the possible further investment needs due to regulatory and other stuff uh, is something that we'd rather invest in our two core segments. That's why we took the decision um, to sell it to Societe uh, Generale. The business will move successively over to uh, 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 in 2019, and our uh, task then will be uh, to de decommission the cost base and uh, flatten out the effects. With pressure on margins, what are you doing on the cost side to keep down costs? Uh, we have uh, seen 17 and 18 with uh, two years of uh, substantial heavy investments, uh, especially in digitalization, which is then the prerequisite uh, especially to uh, run down our uh, cost, uh, both in FTE as well as in operational cost. Um, we have been achieving a lot, um, and as I said, that's the prerequisite, but the pro program is somewhat back-end loaded in 19 and 20. But we will, and we have reiterated, we stick to our cost ambition of $6.5 by 2020. Uh, speaking about targets, you said this morning on the analyst call that you expect to be slightly below your 2020 revenue target. Can you give us some flavor on where you think you're going to land? Yeah, the original ambition is from 2016 and was 9.8 billion. Now, if we look around what has happened since then and where we are today, what we can see is a persistently low interest rate environment. We have the discussions around Europe, Italy, budget, Brexit, um, as well as the more geopolitical situation a somewhat increasing level of trade conflicts. We have seen some of the guidances around uh, corporates in, in Europe um, uh, going backwards a bit. Uh, and in that background, we had the feeling or we have the clear impression that we will not uh, be able to achieve 9.8. would rather slightly below that, uh, but still uh, above the current consensus number, which is 9.2. One of the big discussions here in Germany, one of the things that is putting pressure on uh, the industry is that there's just simply so many banks in this country. What is your view on consolidation and what role do you think Commerzbank will play in that? Yeah, first priority is Commerzbank 4.0. Um, secondly, M&A um, is something which you actively watch and um, carefully value. And thirdly, as I've said previously, it is pretty clear that not only Germany but also Europe in total is overbanked. 
Um, and in that sense, consolidation makes sense and I think is something that will and has to happen. The question is when, because all what we have just discussed has been true for the last five or ten years as well, and not too much happened. So it, it seems uh, the right opportunity, the window of opportunity hasn't really uh, uh, opened so far. Do you think it's more likely we're going to see sort of small transactions? You have been involved yourself in some small sales or smaller purchases as opposed to something big and transformative, although there has been discussion about that in, in Germany as well. I think the, the, the one thing that will probably divide uh, is uh, will it be a national consolidation or will it be transnational consolidation? I think the regulatory tax and other burdens for cross-border are even higher than for national consolidation. So my uneducated guess from right now is uh, if one of the two, uh, that is probably the easier one. But again, it, it, it needs to, it need, we need to wait until something really uh, a tangible happen, and so far, not too much has happened. One of the banks that everyone is talking about, of course, is Nord El Bay because they are looking for investors. Is this interesting at all to Commerzbank? Um, I don't uh, really want to speculate uh, and uh, comment on any market speculation on, on that topic.